let's look at some more delinquents. Hi everybody. So I have pulled out today some Neos and I call them my delinquents. I've had them for two years and we have made very limited progress. And I hope to change that. Because they're all relatively new in this setup, I'm not gonna be pulling out the tags if I don't see the um, Japanese name. I'll put that up in as a pop-up, okay? I don't wanna jiggle that lecker around too much because the way they are right now, I'd like them just to stick with it because we do have root growth. And for me, these are quite precious. And I don't want anything to rub against them or braise them and let them do their thing inside the lacquer. So this is Neon Phoenicia Falcata Kivana. And I can say that because I can read the tag. <laughs> One fan never amounted to much. But this is, they're all little fighters. I don't know about you and your collections. I am really, really impressed and really, really scared at the same time because I'm impressed that they've lasted over a year in a state that really shouldn't have worked. So Kibana has one root now that I then, that's why I made the decision because the root was long enough to go down and do something and maybe hydrate. These are all in just um, RO water with seaweed at 5.8. And I spray them from the top every morning. So yes, it sounds radical, but it is warm enough. And in the window where they sit, if you saw my real estate video, you, you would have seen them all lined up. There's constant air coming in. So when I come out in the mornings, I give them a good drenching from the top, sometimes with my regular fertilizer mix of 300 ppm, but not a lot. I make sure I take the sprayer that only has RO water and seaweed. But sometimes I give them a little bit of a boost, thinking, hoping, fingers crossing, that it does something positive for them to get some nutrients. So this is Kibana, and let's hope that it uh, takes off this summer takes off as much as one can, it establishes itself at least in this setup. And here is Shuteno, one of my Shutenos because I was scared I was going to lose uh, the other one. But um, so this is a replacement plant. I've also put this in the setup here. And look, the roots are doing something. There's a gorgeous, gorgeous new root inside going down. These are the roots that I saw when I had them just in the sphagnum moss before, not like the kokodama style, just in a little nesh basket with sphagnum moss. That was, yeah, over a year and a half I've been doing that, changing the moss and trying again and fresh moss, but nothing, it didn't work. And we're, we're doing something positive on the shuteno. A second fan, and these roots, the two bigger ones that you see, they are, they were there when I repotted it. The little one in there, that's new. And you know what also fascinated me, surprised me, was the fact that this root here was growing while I had it on the, in this moss with mesh uh, basket and it stalled in the moss. Fresh moss, it stopped growing and I'm like, okay. So we'll see what it does. I don't know if it's going to start a new growing tip or not. But yeah, I wasn't going to watch it do that for another year. So fingers crossed. And here is New Phoenicia Fakaja Gojo Fukurin, if I remember correctly. One root and one fan. It's grown two leaves from what? I don't know. I don't know where it grew two leaves from. I mean, I, of course, yeah, from the apex, but it had nothing to support itself. One little root is down in the media, and this is the second one that you see threading through here that has grown um, in the last moss change. So I thought, right, I'm going to take advantage and I'm going to change it up. There's a little 
Oh, an ant. You're welcome. Eat the bugs if there are any. There's a little new fan growing down there. I wonder if that's going to make it. And I can just see the tip of a root right there. Another one. Can you see just right in the apex there? Because the other one is sticking out the other side. And there's a little bulge right there. So that's that, that would be amazing. I'd be really happy with that. So this is all semi-hydro. And I think they've been like this now for maybe three weeks or four weeks. Around about that time. Not long at all. That's why I don't want to um, take the tags out. I don't want to jiggle the lacquer. And here's Neophenicia facata something or other. I don't remember. And this has a kind of a blotchy variegation. As you can see, the leaves come out with highlights. <laughs> or that you could say they need to have their highlights done because the base, the root area, is a bit dark. So this one has no roots. Yes, it does. Sorry. Whoop. Where'd that go? So this one has one root going down, which is... Awesome. They're not they're not looking too shabby and this little root that's doing what it's doing now Started its downward curve. I Would say a week ago Because I'm seeing you know when I repotted it. I saw a root going this way I thought okay Well can't help you there and on its own. It's starting its downward curve So I'm really really pleased and if I have to what I will do I have some tweezers I will move the lecker out to make that access hole bigger until the root is all the way in to let's say about another two or three centimeters and then I'll fill the lecker back around it. The things we do, hey? But I've done that with other orchids as well where I wanted the roots to go into the lecker undisturbed. I have literally with tweezers picked root uh, lecker out and out of the way and watched the root go down, down, down when I was comfortable, it was, being lo it was long enough I put Lekka back on top. It works! <laughs> it works! So yeah, I just thought I would show you my delinquents. It's not their fault. I got these all from Orchid Garden, except for the Schutteno, which came from Röke. And I thought that uh, Sphagnum Moss would be the best situation for them. They were quite weak when they did arrive, so, you know, sphagnum moss, you think that they can handle that and you see it everywhere else. But again, every time I change that sphagnum moss, they would have a problem. So I'm really glad to see that I have some progress going on here. I have the Neophenicia falcata in the traditional Kokodama style. It's not a delinquent, that's why it's not included, because it's growing really well, it blooms really well, and it's loving that setup. But if these do well, then if they pick up, then I'm quite tempted actually to put my new Phoenicia Falcata into this setup as well, just because it makes everything more easy. And sphagnum moss is kind of expensive, I also have to import it all the time, so. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. <laughs> this is looking promising. I have high hopes. And yes, it's true, I do forfeit seeing the beautiful root tips. As you can see, you know, if they go down into the lecker, yeah, that's something I don't then cannot enjoy or appreciate. But as long as they live and then they improve and they grow better, then I suppose I can handle that side of the equation. So yeah, here are my delinquent neos. Fingers crossed this is not just a four week positive spurt because they're getting hydrated. Um, fingers crossed that they actually will take to this setup and grow stronger for it. I hope. I hope. They were quite expensive as you can imagine. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the background noise. 
and I will see you next time. Everybody stay safe and take care. Bye.